Dr. Sage here, back with the first of four videos on the cell cycle and mitosis. Okay, in this set of video lectures, we're going to learn about cell division. In really brief summary, cell division is when you have a cell and that cell splits or divides to become two separate cells. Okay, that's the process of cell division. Cell division is part of the cell cycle, which I'll describe in detail in a second, but essentially the cell cycle is from the time you have a newly made cell until the time that cell divides again on its own to become two cells. Okay, so what's the purpose of cell division? Well, that depends on what type of cell or organism you are. For example, if you're a unicellular organism, that means one individual organism is only one cell big. For example, a bacteria, which is a prokaryote, or a yeast cell, which is a eukaryote. So one yeast is only one cell big. One bacteria is only one cell big. So if that bacteria, for example, that one cell, which is one bacteria, if it starts to divide and become two cells, what it's just done is it's just become two bacteria. So what unicellular organisms use cell division for is reproduction. You now have two bacteria instead of one bacteria. They just reproduce. Now, multicellular organisms, things like us, what we use cell division for is one thing, development from a fertilized cell. Another thing we use cell division for is growth. For example, this is the root tip of an onion. Okay, plant roots need to be able to grow longer. And that how they grow longer is near the tip of the roots. There's a region where the cells are constantly going through cell division. They just keep dividing over and over and over again. And divide, by dividing, what's happening is this root is growing longer. Or we can use cell division for repair or regeneration. For example, the salamander here. Okay, or living in Florida, you've probably all seen those little lizards that are crawling around all over the place. And if their tail gets ripped off, what happens is they can regrow an entire new tail. Like this salamander had its tail removed and it regrew its tail here. How does it do that? Well, the cells start dividing to create new cells to regrow this tail. Okay, now as a human, unfortunately, if you lose an appendage, we can't regrow the entire appendage. But we do use cell division for repair. For example, let's say you get a cut in your skin. Okay, your skin is your protective barrier. It protects you from your environment. You don't want that open wound in your protective barrier in your skin. So what happens is the skin cells around the cut start to divide to grow over that cut to heal that wound. Okay, so we do use it for repair, just not for the extent that like a lizard or a salamander does. Now, to do cell division, there's two different ways you can do it. One is called mitosis and the other is called meiosis. In this first series of four video lectures, we're going to talk about mitosis. In the next series of video lectures after this one, that's when we're going to learn about meiosis. But I'm going to briefly introduce you to meiosis today, even though we're going to focus on mitosis. Okay, so most cell division results in daughter cells with identical genetic information or identical DNA. For example, let's say your skin cells. Okay, you're losing skin cells every day. You have to replace those skin cells you're losing. Okay, how do you do that? Well, one skin cell divides, become two skin cells. Okay, well, inside every single one of your skin cells, you have your entire set of DNA. As a human, that means you have in your skin cells 46 chromosomes, okay, about 30,000 genes. Well, it turns out, all of your skin cells need all 46 of those chromosomes and they have those about 30,000 genes in all of your skin cells. So you have one skin cell with 46 chromosomes in it. It's gonna become two skin cells where they both need 46 chromosomes. So before this cell can divide, what has to happen is it has to copy all of its DNA, all of its chromosomes. So you have enough DNA or chromosomes for two cells instead of just enough DNA for one cell. Since it's making a copy of its own DNA, it should be hypothetically an identical copy, kind of like a photocopy. So what that means is these two skin cells should be genetically identical to each other or like clones of each other. Okay, that happens through a process called mitosis. So we're gonna learn about this series of video lectures. The other type of cell division is called meiosis. Meiosis is the type of cell division that's used to produce the gametes. The gametes are the reproductive cells, so that'd be the sperm cell and the egg cell. In humans, the only cells that are made by meiosis are the gametes. Now, meiosis yields non-identical daughter cells 
that have half as many chromosomes as the cell they came from. So what this means is obviously there's two different categories of cells in your body. You have the non-reproductive cells and you have the reproductive cells. The non-reproductive cells are called somatic cells. In humans, somatic cells have 46 chromosomes. But more specifically, what they actually have is 23 pairs of chromosomes. What that means is we have 23 different types of chromosomes. And in your somatic cells, you have two of each type. You have two chromosome ones and two chromosome twos and two chromosome threes and two chromosome fours, etc. Okay, so you have 23 different types, two of each type. That gives you 46 total chromosomes in your somatic cells. The other type of cells are the gametes. The gametes are the reproductive cells. That'd be the sperm cell and the egg cell. The gametes have half as many chromosomes as the somatic cells. So in humans, that means the human gamete has 23 chromosomes or more specifically, one of each type. Okay, so each gamete, each sperm cell or each egg cell has one chromosome one, one chromosome two, one chromosome three, etc. Now, if you think through this for a minute, it makes sense that the gametes have half as many chromosomes. Let's say that you have an adult human biological female. Okay, since she's a human, she's gonna have 46 chromosomes. Now, she's gonna make her reproductive cell, which is going to be in her case, the egg cell, and that egg cell is gonna have half as many chromosomes. It's gonna have 23 chromosomes, one of each type instead of two of each type. Then let's say you have an adult human biological male. Okay, he's gonna have 46 chromosomes. He's gonna make his reproductive cell, that's gonna be the sperm cell, that's gonna have one of each type of chromosome or 23 total chromosomes. Now the sperm cell and the egg cell are gonna combine through the process of fertilization to make the zygote, which is gonna have again 46 chromosomes. And that zygote is gonna develop into the embryo fetus adult. Okay, so it makes sense that the gametes have half as many chromosomes because two gametes come together to remake the 46 chromosomes that we need as an adult human. So the reason that you have two of each type of chromosome is because one of each type came from the egg cell that made you from your mom, and one of each type came from the sperm cell that made you from your dad. That's why we have two of each type of chromosome. Okay, so if you're looking at your cell, if you take the total of the DNA inside your cell, that constitutes your genome. So the genome is all of the DNA or all of the genes in the cell of an organism. And the genomes are going to be different in different organisms. Like the human genome, that's the about 30,000 genes that humans have. That's going to be different from the mouse genome, because mice have a different set of genes than humans. And that's going to be different from the fly genome, because flies have a different set of genes than humans and mice. A genome can consist of a single DNA molecule, like in prokaryotes, bacteria. They have one small circular chromosome. Or a genome can be made up of many chromosomes. Like in, in humans, we have 46 chromosomes, two of each type. Um, so we have multiple different types of chromosomes. So DNA molecules are packaged into a cell in chromosomes. It's almost a definite that you've heard that term before, chromosomes. One that you might not have heard of before that sounds kind of similar though is chromatin. Okay, so eukaryotic chromosomes are made up of chromatin. Chromatin is DNA with proteins attached to it. Those proteins are gonna help the, the DNA to condense or coil uh, during cell division, which we'll learn about that a little bit later. The other thing to note about chromosomes is that every species has a characteristic number of chromosomes. For example, humans, with some rare exceptions to we'll talk about in a later lecture, have 46 chromosomes. So basically, essentially all humans have 46 chromosomes but not all living things have 46 chromosomes. For example, a fruit fly has eight chromosomes and all fruit flies have eight chromosomes. All right, so when you think about a chromosome, what you probably think of is this like X-shaped structure, kind of like this. Okay, why? Because it's always drawn that way. Or maybe you've seen microscope images like this one here that it shows that X-shaped structure of a chromosome. But it turns out chromosomes do not normally look like that. And there's two reasons they don't normally look like that. So a chromosome looks like this only when the cell is about to go through cell division. Okay, the first reason is because this is a highly condensed chromosome. It's been condensed or coiled or packed away to make it take up less space. 
Why? Because during cell division, you're going to have to be able to move those chromosomes, and it's much easier to move them when they've been packed away. The second reason that this is not what your chromosomes normally look like is because this is a chromosome that's already made a copy of itself. Recall that to go through cell division, you have one cell that's going to become two cells. And these two cells need the entire set of chromosomes. So before that can happen, you have to copy all of your chromosomes, all of your DNA, so you have enough chromosomes for two cells instead of one. Okay, well this X-shaped structure that you're used to thinking about, that's a chromosome that's already copied itself. Okay, so there's actually two DNA double helixes here. There's one double helix over here on the left, another double helix over here on the right. And they're exact copies of each other. So this chromosome, this X shape, that's for a chromosome that's about to go through cell division. If a chromosome was not about to go through cell division, if it had not copied itself yet, it would look more like this, one DNA double helix. Now there's also a naming system that goes along with the chromosomes you have to learn. Okay, this right here, that is called a chromosome. That is one chromosome. This right here, that is also called a chromosome. That is one chromosome. Now, at first, that's confusing because obviously they're not exactly the same. For example, this one is twice as much DNA as this one, but they are both called one chromosome. If you do need to be able to differentiate them, this one we can call an unduplicated chromosome because it has not been duplicated or copied yet. Whereas this one we can call a duplicated chromosome. Okay, so we have one unduplicated chromosome, one duplicated chromosome. Now, that duplicated chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids. So there's one sister chromatid here and one sister chromatid here. Okay, now those two sister chromosomes are attached to each other at this spot right here. That spot is called the centromere. So the centromere is where the two sister chromosomes are attached to each other. So we have one unduplicated chromosome. Then you go through DNA duplication. That gives you one duplicated chromosome made up of two sister chromatids. Then during mitosis, what's going to happen is those two sister chromatids are going to get pulled apart and move to two opposite sides of the cell. Okay, so one's going to get pulled apart from the other one. As soon as you pull them apart, you can no longer call them sister chromatids. Now, this is a chromosome and this is a chromosome. They're each a chromosome now. And sometimes they're called daughter chromosomes to represent the fact they came from this. Okay, so let's do that whole thing. One unduplicated chromosome, one duplicated chromosome made up of two sister chromatids attached to the centromere. Then you pull those sister chromatids apart. You can't call them sister chromatids anymore. Now you have two daughter chromosomes. Okay, so that's the naming system for the chromosomes. When you separate the chromosomes is during mitosis, which is part of the cell cycle. Okay, so the cell cycle is made up of mitotic phase or M phase which mitotic phase is made up of mitosis, which is the proper separation of the chromosomes, and cytokinesis, which is where the cell actually separates into two separate cells. So mitosis, separation of the chromosomes, cytokinesis, separation of the cell into two cells. So M phase, mitosis and cytokinesis is part of the cell cycle. But the other part of the cell cycle, everything is this gray shading outside of it, that is called interphase okay so interphase is part of the cell cycle and interphase is made up of three subphases g1 s and g2 if the cell needs to divide if you have one cell and needs to split into two separate cells two really big events need to happen one really big event that needs to happen is you need to copy all of your dna okay that's a big deal in humans that's 46 chromosomes that's about 30,000 genes that's literally billions of base pairs, the letters that make up DNA, ATCG, billions of them. Okay, copying all that information is a big deal. When that happens is during S phase of interphase. That's when you copy all of your DNA. In fact, S stands for synthesis. That's when you're synthesizing or copying your DNA. So that's one really big event that needs to happen. The other really big event that needs to happen is you need to properly separate your chromosomes because you're going from one cell to two cells. These two cells, they both need 46 chromosomes and they need the right 46. 
both of these cells have to have two chromosome ones and two chromosome twos and two chromosome threes, etc. For example, you can't have this cell over here that has one chromosome one and three chromosome twos. That cell won't live, it will die. Okay, so it has to have the correct number and types of chromosomes. So separating those 46 chromosomes is a big deal. When does that happen? During M phase, mitosis in particular, and the cytokinesis separating this on the two cells. So the two really big events that need to happen, copying the DNA, S phase of interphase, separating the chromosomes and separating the cell into two separate cells, that's M phase mitosis and cytokinesis. Those are two really big events that need to happen. And then between those two, there's basically two gaps in time that pass between them. And in fact, they're called gaps. So G1 stands for gap one, G2 stands for gap two. Now in reality, it's not like nothing is happening during those times. So in G1 of interphase, what's really happening is the cell is living its normal daily life, doing all of its normal metabolic functions. So when the cell uses its DNA to make mRNA and proteins, that's happening during G1 phase. In fact, your cell spends most of its time in G1. The only time it's not in G1 is when the cell is about to divide and cells are not constantly dividing. G2, again, it's not like the cell is doing nothing. What the cell is doing is it's preparing to do mitosis. Okay, there's things that need to happen besides copy the DNA. Like the cell needs to grow bigger. You need to make extra copies of the organelles, things like that. So we're not gonna learn the details of that for this class, but just know during G2, the cell is preparing to do mitosis. Okay, so in this slide, what I'm really doing is I'm focusing on interphase, because we're gonna learn the details of mitosis and cytokinesis actually in a future video lecture, like the next video lecture. So in this slide, what I want you to focus on is interphase, made up of three subphases. G1 of interphase, the cell lives its normal daily life, does all of its normal metabolic functions. S phase of interphase, that's where it copies all of its DNA. G2 of interphase, that's where the cell prepares to do mitosis. Okay, so that's your introduction to the cell cycle. And that's the first video of four where we talk about the cell cycle and mitosis. In the next video, we're going to learn about mitosis. Okay, so until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.